pretty much everybody's a social entrepreneur at this phase. We don't live in a world anymore where you can just check off a major and go check off this job and have a way to live. We are our own walking products, having to kind of sell ourselves in our own ways. But the opportunity is that we can really figure out what that hybrid looks like, that we can be of service to the earth and still live and, and thrive in an environment at the same time, that those things don't have to be disconnected. Like many cities across the world, you always see, where you see poverty, you tend to see pollution. And so um, West Oakland, Richmond, Bayview Hunters Point in San Francisco, Cherryland, Deep East Oakland, all these areas are areas that have a lot of freeways, that have a lot of diesel pollution, that have a lot of lack of access to healthy food. There's not a lot of grocery stores. There's an abundance of liquor stores, tobacco advertising, alcohol advertising. It's easier to get a gun than it is an organic tomato. And so the power and the opportunity has been how we can use food as an on-ramp, if you will, into a broader conversation about equity and inequality. We always start where communities are at. We never walk into a community thinking that we have all the answers. So we use the KWL approach, which is really an approach from the classroom that I've been able to bring in. And you start with, what does a community know? What are the assets of the community? What's already going on in the community? And where are the gaps? Rather than thinking that we're going to come in and kind of drop a solution into a community, it's really helping to co-create the solution in harmony with the people who live there. The biggest message that I want to get out is really honoring the expertise that is within these communities already, recognizing that part of the shift of the planet means that we're going to have to do business differently. We're going to have to think about business differently. And so what that means for underserved communities is we can't just apply for grants and think that we're going to get government subsidies or money from other people to, uh, to address our problems, that we're going to actually have to be the new generation of inventors. And that business models, sustainable business models, can actually bring revenue in. I think the most inspiring thing is showing that through a little bit of education and access to resources that we have continuously been able to dispel the notion that poor communities, underserved communities don't care about the environment.